we should to be aware of dangerous sense of the word when come. That's when come because you can choose to do or not to do. I love this word. Be patient with something that you cannot change, and be brave to change something that you can change, and be wise enough to distinguish between those two things. Welcome to M Hour, and today you with me, an Amy High monk who never get high. Pramadapan Santi Pato, IB Half Foundation and Golden Mount Temple. I, I can see you navigating yourself and exploring how to better the world, how to share Buddhism knowledge through many methods, many ways when you were in the UK. What I want to learn is how does the world perceive Buddhism now? Do they practice more? When I was that I luckily got invited by the Meditation Association of Leeds University to teach, to lead meditation session. And I remember that the first semester that I was invited, they thought that I'm gonna sit and then take a deep breath, close your eyes softly. I think they, they expected that. And then I, I started with the talk, why are you here? <laughs> And so many of them talk about the, they don't want to be stressful, for example, and someone want to, to be happier. I share with them that actually, if you never submit your assignment, even you meditate here for 24 hours, that problem never gone. And then some of them ask me about happiness because they want to be happier. They, they see mindfulness as the key for running away from suffering. But my, my answer to them is just like, mindfulness help you to not just only run away from suffering, but also to be steady, to be calm. And then when you never get affected by your emotion, by surrounding factor, then you can see the root cause right, of the problems and you will be determined enough to solve that problem. So mindfulness would help you to be stronger, to focus more on what you should focus. And because of that, you can see things clearly. That's everything that I experienced. I even was in the train station and then someone approached me and said that thank you, thank you and thank Buddhism for for teaching mindfulness. And they, they brought out their, uh, his telephone. He brought out his telephone and showed me that because of mindfulness application, right now, his wife, my wife, he said, got cancer. And they have five children. And he said that he couldn't imagine how he gonna survive this without practicing mindfulness. After that meditation association, uh, invited me, the faculty of, of medication, right, or medicine, Kanapad of the University of Leeds, they invited me to, to share my experience because this is very interesting. In the UK, even it, you know, secular state, but they know that in, in real life, so many people live their life on religious belief. They found that so many patients suffer or not suffer because of their religious belief. So they want their medical student to learn about culture, about religious belief. So they send their medical student to learn from different religious places. And the Buddhist temple also one, one of the, those religious places. And I was the one who, who shared about this. So I learned uh, what they share. Wow, that's uh, I can, I was thinking along, and you might have seen a lot of experiences. For example, the story you talk about on the, on, on the train, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, a stranger approached you mm -hmm. and appreciate mindfulness and Buddhism. Yes. Mm. Yes. What, what are the common problems that people come and ask you for advice? I think normally, uh, no matter who you are, you share the same suffering because of something that you never expected. Like sometime your beloved one pass away right away without any sign. And sometimes it's about health issues. 
I think this kind of the common thing, people happy or suffer because of the way that they manage their minds. And normally, because they want everything to be the way they want to. And that caused many problems. To be honest, I think in Thai culture, at least because we experience something like Ploi Wang and the oh, Wen Kam, something like that. So I think a lot of things in Thai culture already help people with stress management. But in, in Western culture, they kind of their have less than us because they want their life to be productive. Okay, you need to learn about time management, tiny habits, atomic habits, whatsoever. Mindset, for example. And sometimes not all those things can help because some expected things can happen. But it's good insight that I get to learn today that the fact that Thai people have this word uh, that they use quite often, you know, like when gum, ploy wang. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it could be a, a bad thing, you know, like because yeah. sometimes in Thailand things are not logical. Yes. Uh, but in a way, mm -hmm. people uh, kind of learn how to be immune to things that may go wrong in their life. Yeah, but to be honest, I also want to share that we, we should to be aware of, you know, dangerous sense of the word when come because so many Thai people they don't try to solve problems because they they, they think that that's about when come mm. no that's when come because you can choose to do or not to do uh, the most important thing is about I love this word I learned from that kind of their association helping people to stop drinking alcohol they said that the like be patient with something that you cannot change and be brave to change something that you can change and be wise enough to distinguish between those two things. In Thai, it's just like Jong Otton Po, Tia Ton Kap Sing Tip Lian Plang, Mai Dai, Jong Kla Po, Tia Pian Plang, Sing Tip Lian Plang Dai, La Jong Chalat Po, Tia Ru Kwam Tang, La Wang Song Sing Nan. So many times I think Thai people, you know, too patient <laughs> for something that they can change and that's not good at all. I like when you mention the three lines. I think what I want to hear from you is, are there any other wisdom like this that you get to use quite often nowadays? I know that there are so many, there are million people, there are like million problems mm -hmm. and everything has to be customized, but is there anything that you get to share okay. quite often nowadays? Okay, what I share quite often is about two classes. First of all, we call like green glasses. Take a look on the bright side. The essence of this story is about you cannot change the whole world to be green, but you can change what you're wearing right now with green glasses. We call one kill to wear green glasses. It's just like, how can I say, if you cannot change your situation, you can change your attitude. If you have this mindset, at least you have hope. And I always, share with people that normally if you suffer yesterday because of you don't too quiet, you didn't too quiet. It's just like when you lose your wealth, well I see a tang, you lose nothing. Because when you were born, you have nothing with you in terms of wealth or money. When you lose your health, you lose something. Because if you were born with the whole body completely okay. But later on you got some condition and your health is not good. You lose your health, that you lose something. But you lose, when you lose your hope, you lose everything. Because so many people, even they lost their legs, lost their arms, but if, if they have hope, they can still alive, even happily, than people who have everything. But if you lose your hope, even you have everything, you don't want to live anymore. So first, wearing green glasses. But if you just only, you know, enjoy Tung Lavender, <laughs> it's just like, you cannot just take a look on the bright side only. You need to look on the bright side to be hopeful, to solve the problems. But if you need to fix problems, you need to wear like clear glasses. We call Wen Kao in Thai. It's just like, if you don't see the root cause of the problem, you fix 
problem in phenomenal level it just already there all the time and you need to keep coming back to fix those problems because you don't change the structure something it kind of the structural violence structural problem that can bring that kind of suffering again and again to your life if you don't change people you hang out with if you don't change your habit if you don't change the way that you interact with something or some people surrounding you everything would come back again and again until you change I went back to what you said about your dom <laughs> i wouldn't say i have my own dom but because i i introduced myself that my name is like skyly and after that they call it dom skyly and yes they they kind of supported me for me it was very interesting and i i i didn't expect that because to be honest in the past i kind of avoid from being in the spotlight at that time because i was afraid that if i kind of you know people respected me too much treated me too well and then my ego gonna bigger but last year i think since i decided to go with the long pi shui do it monks help me work poi show at that time i decided okay i feel secure enough to stand up in the spotlight and no matter happen i can learn both side i mean if i if my ego bigger i would realize that oh i need to practice more but in the case i can still humble and do what i have to do it means my practice works i i have learned this in the hard way because in the first my first 22 years of monkhood i try to avoid building relationship with people but last year i realized that it's just like people learn the best when they have relationship with us and back to what the buddha taught actually the sangha is community of people who are kalyanamit good friends so if they don't love you or if they don't like you how they going to trust you and follow what you teach them and also learn that we i mean i myself need to be careful as well that sometime don't miss between n and mean so i i i told my team that at the beginning that we need to build community but then don't forget that why we build community for i always chat with my team that ya lu mo tham alai phue arai don't forget what is your purpose of doing this so i'm not sure that i <laughs> that's uh, that's a very beneficial for for us i was going to ask about how to handle ego because you mentioned it But, but I think you have already answered that back to your first intention always I think I I was lucky that my dad actually my mom uh who was the one who cultivated kindness compassion in my life but my dad also played a crucial role and he was the one who wanted me to realize about my ego when i was 15 years old at the time i i received like you know in thai it called prayok ha it mean level 5 of pali education there are nine levels of pali education at the time i was so young uh, but i was a teacher already at the time i still felt that i um i was humble but my dad won my brother and and me to go to practice in the forest temple in ubon rajathani when i was there it's just like we had one meal <laughs> and i was the one who sit the last the head monk sit over there and me at the end of the row we need to wait at the end and think about the 15 novices so many delicious thing that we have no right <laughs> because along the way that you know some monk going to take that bread and after that it's just like the way that monk treat us they wanted to to train us so they kind of their how can i say like for example yin yu dai ngai kham huo wu yai nang long and i i felt that oh the way that i thought that i had no ego actually there is but in the past when i when i was in the the place that they honor us we never saw it i was lucky mm. to receive that chance so when i was young i saw that the most dangerous thing is about you think that you have no ego and that kind of the most dangerous ego so that the way that i think we should learn 
how to deal with ego. First, realize that you may have that ego that you never thought that you have. Second, if you see how big <laughs> your ego is, try to, what do you call, demolish it, eliminate it from time to time by learning more, listening to people more, doing something that maybe it kind of there hit your ego. And keep in mind that you cannot make everyone have the right attitude on you. Someone will misunderstand you. To practice like this also kind of the eliminate your ego as well. Uh, coming to the last part, the societal aspect of Buddhism, I think in the last year we get to see Pra Paiwan, Pra Mahasompong, they were being very popular. Nowadays they have to, I, didn't, I don't know the word in English, but they are not a monk anymore. Mm -hmm. I think my question is that it's a bit of pity that we lose a monk who is such a good communicator. This is not a question, but this, this is what I feel. And I just want to hear your opinion about how to make Buddhism sustainable. Because I read news every day, bad monks are still in temple, mm -hmm. but the good ones are gone. The good one in this studio. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. So I think to, to share my opinion with you, I think uh, we can wear green glasses. At least we can see that Buddhism can create positive impact to this society and monks can do that. I think on the 3rd of, the, of September, like last year, on that show, 200,000 viewers are live. It means Buddhism can better this society, but we need also better communicator monks. Also in the long run, I think we cannot just only wait for some great communicator to happen, to be born. We need to provide the platform or the space that great communicator monks to be born, like systematically. This is quite sad for me because vulnerable, the most vulnerable, some that protocol Satan, PA Payuto, and also Nong Pari. All of those, even they receive education, get educated by the system, the religious institute, but the system didn't create them. This is not by, by process. And I think it depends on those people. Maybe the bad system <laughs> inspire them to get away from the system. And that's a result. For example, in case of Perry, why at that time he could communicate, he know the audience, he know the society, and he know how to get public attention. Even the end, now he transformed to she. And she also still is great communicator and communicate many important things to, to this society. So for me, at least she's still doing what she great at. And as a way of life of lay person, she do what she need to do to live her life. I don't think it's because of the system make them to go away. I think in real life, everyone, like when we are Buddhist monks, I think it's like, a, like when you work, at a certain point, maybe we, you need to make decision that you're going to keep doing this or you're going to choose a different way. So in, in Buddhism, we have four groups like Pikku, Pikuni, Ubasok, Pasika. So it's okay to be just only good lay people, both male and female. You don't need to be a monk. Thank you very much. I think I can read my producer mind and she will want me to ask you one last thing. Okay. How was your experience uh, discussing Buddhism in English with me? We are both Thai. It can be awkward sometimes to, to speak in English. Yeah. But our show designed to encourage people to discuss more globally. That's what I highly appreciated that. I also felt that in the past because I thought that I would wait until my English is perfect and then I'm going to speak, I'm going to deliver my talk. But if you never practice, your English never been perfect. And even you practice, maybe you're not perfect. So for me, because, because I'm learning that no one is perfect, so I decide to be this perfect. I pen bap sambun, le pen pra oan nit nit. Thank you very much for this valuable experience. My English is not good enough to express my gratitude toward your competence and your kindness. 
and your generosity because I I felt that you're trying to do what you have what you have been doing now because you want to see this society this world better and better and I remember what you wrote on many review so thank you for that thank, thank you. you very much it's been a very good hour thank you WorkPoint Today สาระความรู้เพื่อวันนี้